I just had to eat that. Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today we are going to talk about Girls of Storm and Shadow. I'm a poop. Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I am filming a book review and I am reviewing Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha. <laughs> This one is being released on the 5th of November and I got my art from my friend Justine who is just kind to me. Girls of Storm and Shadow is a sequel to Girls of Paper and Fire which was released last year in November I believe. I read it earlier this year and I really really enjoyed it and it follows Lei who is being forced to be a paper girl who is basically like a coke bin for the Demon King and in this world we have different castes. You're in the paper cast which is for the humans, steel cast where you're half human half demon or moon cast where you're fully demon and in this world the demons control things and are like are above the humans and there's demon king who is really really bad and discriminates against the paper cast so Lei is a paper girl and as i said is forced to be a concubine for the king she has these really special eyes which are like golden so people like assume she has demon blood in her but she is otherwise actually no completely human. She goes through horrible things in the first book. There is a trigger warning for sexual assault and talk about sexual assault um, the aftermath of that. Lei also meets this girl Ran who she falls for who is one of the other paper girls and they fall for each other so it is an affect romance as well. It is an Asian inspired fantasy which I love by the way so we get awesome demon creatures we get an FF fantasy and it's Asian inspired I mean what more can you ask for in a fantasy what I enjoyed so much about the first book was that Lei is kind of soft but also very very strong and I just really liked her personality it is a bit slow going but it just have all these good elements which makes it a unique YA story which I really enjoyed so you know this is a sequel and if you still haven't read the first book you probably shouldn't watch more of this for you maybe like I'm not gonna spoil anything that happened happens here I wouldn't do that anyway but I am gonna talk a bit about this and this here so like if you don't want to know the ending of the first book you shouldn't be here but again I won't spoil like big things obviously happening here so it's up to you. Ghost of Storm and Shadow picks up after the events of the first book where it is believed that the Demon King is dead. Lei and Bran and the other people that are met in the after book is like hiding at his temple and they get a new mission from Bran's father who is like the leader of the rebellion against the king and the kingdom they live in because after the attack on the king the court is kind of in chaos and they want to take over the power now that they are in chaos so they need allies and they are sent out to get three different allies i believe it is different demon cast because i don't actually remember the third one that we're gonna visit but besides the point. So they go out on this journey, really it's Bran who was like the chosen one but she wasn't the one who attacked the king as we know from the first book which was ended up being Lei and Lei is called Moon Chosen where like people look upon her as the chosen one since she was the one who attacked the king. I don't know why I keep moving my hand like this but apparently we are going with it. So yeah as I said we are going out on this journey to get these allies and that's where the story starts and not obviously as I said gonna spoil anything if you still haven't read it which would be impossible unless you had the art because it's not yet released again November 5th. I generally don't like journey plots kind of like a journey plot is really like a way for the author to introduce us more to the world and the characters and to get them all to know each other but it does slow the story down and it's kind of like staggers because of that but really we do get to know the characters so so well here and we, I really started to care for them so much and I loved what we got to see more of the world here. Things of course happen on this journey that's really normal for journey plot. Things come up that are in the way of their quest. I just feel like it's a really normal thing to put this kind of quest story in the middle book because like you have the first book, you have a pang and then you need to do something in the second book. And since the plot here is this quest story, you know that it's kind of not gonna wrap it up kind of like of course it's the second book and it is a trilogy that i figured out that i was gonna check in the middle of reading i was like is this a duology or trilogy and i had to go and check because i had to see if the story is gonna wrap up or not you can think about it like this if it had been a duology they probably wouldn't have gone on this journey they would probably just have said they had these allies if were to happen and go straight to the palace but then we wouldn't have all this time with the characters and form more relationships 
and for more relations to with the world we are in. So like a duality is just an extension of everything we can get so we can get more and I can't really complain about getting more here because I just liked everything that happened so much. I mean I didn't like it when things were sad but like it was really well written, the sad parts, by the way. I just generally fell in love with the characters. I liked them so much. And there were some really, really shocking things coming out to play. Lei and Brand's relationship were dug into so deeply. And I really, really just sort of care for them. But also, it wasn't perfect by any means. And I just love how the author challenged their relationship. And was willing to go all these steps to make them a bigger headcanon. <laughs> a big head cannon, a bigger relationship. Like seriously, some reveals here I was just so shocked by and I think that this is just a very strong sequel. Even with the weakness of it being like a quest travel plot that I was kind of surprised of it being, I as I said enjoyed it because it was written so well, it was done so well. We get to know the world in such a well written way that I again can't complain about it but it as I said also does stop the whole we don't get a resolution here so we need to wait for the third book for that which is I guess normal but I have talked about this in before but if this is the first time you're watching this I do enjoy books where the main plot is kind of solved early on so that you're really surprised what's happening because now we're in this battle against the demon cast right and it's the same battle in the first second and third book but what if that battle had been resolved for example saying in the first book and then you see the aftermath of that and there's a new conflict in the next few books i really like that turn on books where like it's a totally new plot line because then you don't really know what's happening now i know that the battle against demons cast or like the oppression all that the whole plot there is what the next book is going to be about and I'm not saying that the book is weak because of this i'm just saying that i generally just like more surprises but again it does carry a lot of surprises <laughs> also the approach that lays a survivor of sexual assault is approached really really nicely and how they talk about it and how they approach it and deal with it and just find love in each other and support of others but also being able to go out and carry yourself throughout even for what you've been through all that is so greatly portrayed her i love how the approach upon women and how they also treat it that that is even worse etc and just also how can't defeat tyranny a bit more tyranny also if you are the hero of the story how far would you be willing to go to free the world from tyranny and bad things but doing bad things in the process, do you still consider yourself a good guy? There's a lot of questions around this and how it's all approached and I just, I really enjoy that too. I genuinely just like Lei and Ren a lot also because there's so many different flaws and perfections they have. Like Ren all her life thought she was the chosen one to kill the king and now that Lei ended up doing this, her role in the world is suddenly changed and she doesn't know how to deal with this. And Lei, after everything she's been through, turns suddenly to alcohol for example and she finds out it's much easier to drink than deal with her every day but also tries to overcome this because she realized it is a problem. So again just so many sides to the story it's just really well thought through as a quest story a journey story i just like the different things they approach the different thing they meet on the way and also these small inner conflicts that comes on the way and again an asian spy fantasy with demons after romance i just feel like it carries a lot and i am very pleasantly surprised that i didn't dislike the middle book because the middle book can be really hard what makes it so good is that Natasha is not afraid to challenge the characters to make them say things that are really hard and to make them and to stand them up against each other and say the things that can hurt them the most. That's really really good writing. I'm just yes. Throughout the book we also get different perspectives of other characters in different places and I really enjoy those parts that we get to know what's happening for the rest of the kingdom as Lei and her company are traveling because they are kind of isolated from the rest of the world at the moment. So to wrap things up, I just really really enjoy this. I love how you can go through something terrible but make something great out of it which doesn't make the thing you want through less terrible but it makes you, it changes you but you can choose to, to let that destroy you or you can choose to be like Lei which I think is really inspiring. 
I love that again the girls are Asian it's an Asian inspired fantasy I said that many times but I just I love it so much because I'm Asian myself I love that it's an FF romance and that it's done so well and I just love as I said all these elements that I've been talking about I just feel like I'm repeating myself so it just have so many good things and as I've been sitting here talking and reviewing this book I just realized how many good things it had because I tried to get like my thoughts talking these sentences and I was just like I like it even more now that I talked about it than I did before filming this so yeah I gave it four out of five stars but I think it could be even rounded up to maybe 4.5 at least like a higher rating I think if you enjoyed the first book this expands on everything that you enjoyed and explores so much more and I think a lot of people will enjoy this that enjoyed the first book and if you still haven't picked up the series then really really give it a chance if you've been here for this whole video okay I am gonna end that there and I will thank you so much for watching I think like I actually managed to collect my thoughts pretty well in this video and I'm done now so again 5th of November pick up Ghost of Storm and Shadow I think it was so great and you will see me soon in a new video bye